I'm not the type to to do long lessons, so this won't be a marathon lesson. But uh, I want to I want to address something, uh, a particular scripture and uh, to the prophecy to be exact. And uh, this is something popular uh, amongst the uh, so-called Black Hebrew Israelite community. Um, this sp- a specific understanding on on uh, the prophecy found in uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. And uh, I've also found this this prophecy being, being interpreted uh, in a s- similar way amongst uh, those who aren't part of the uh, quote-unquote black Hebrew Israelite community. Um, it's found amongst some Messianics and, and uh, Protestants as well. But mainly um, it's been a buzzword, and I'm sure many of us have heard it, you know, it's the, the, the two-thirds, you know, part of two-thirds of Israel is is supposed to die in the future. Now, this is based on, uh, once again, and, and I'm not making attacks at anyone. I, I, I'm, I attack the doctrine, you know, if the teaching's incorrect, I attack that. This is not a personal attack on anyone, nor is it, uh, you know, it, it, it it's not directed in a negative way. So uh, with that said, you know, those who are listening and might be corrected by this lesson, you know, I, I would advise you to, uh, you know, look for truth. If truth is important to you, then uh, focus on that, you know, instead of pride or, or uh, following traditions or teachings that's been handed down over the years. So uh, I want to get right into it. Let's, let's go on over to uh, the book of Zechariah. Chapter 13. Is there a... Is my reader out there? Yeah, still no. not yet, brother. Yeah, not yet, okay. brother. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. All not right. a problem. All right. Uh, Zechariah 13, verse 8. It reads, And it shall come to pass that in the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say it is my people, and they shall say Yahweh is my Elohim. Now, this prophecy has been interpreted as a future prophecy in the end, and uh, saying that two-thirds of the nation of Israel will be cut off and die. And the the, uh, the leftover one-third will be those who uh, are delivered and won't see death. Um, now, this is a physical death that many of them speak on when they, when they interpret this scripture this way. And uh, once, once again, there's a major problem with context. You know, so to really understand what's going on, we would have to back up and and read few, uh, the previous verses. Actually, I I I would advise someone to uh, start in in uh, chapter twelve of Zechariah. Let's back up some. Okay. Now, if we were to, let's say, for example, you look at uh, verse 1, Zechariah 13, verse 1. And I'm going to read this. It says, In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. So we can see that it's dealing with the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right, that's, that's clear right there. Now, there's many prophecies listed, you know, throughout these verses. But I just want to point out some things. Notice in verse 2 it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered, and also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. All right, now what land is it speaking of? Now it, it just mentioned in the previous verse the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay, so we we can clearly see that this is the land that, that is being spoken about here. Um, I want to skip on down to 
actually uh let's skip let's jump down to verse seven. It reads, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Now, many of us have read this scripture in another place. Okay? Now, let, let's, we're going to get back to uh, Zechariah, but... Let's let's turn over to uh the book of Matthew. Okay, let's go to uh the book of Matthew or Metik Yahoo chapter twenty six and we'll read verse thirty one. Now we can see this is right before um the Messiah was arrested. All right. So uh and it reads Then saith Yahshua unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is, it, it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Now, he quoted, that was a, a, an exact quote from uh, Zechariah. All right, so we can see that the prophecy that's being referenced here is taking place during the Messiah's time. All right, that's clear. He quoted the prophecy. It really is now notice let's go back to Zechariah. Zechariah thirteen. I'm gonna read verse verse seven again. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Now notice the next verse. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Now, we've already read in, previously in the chapter that we know the, the location of this land because the, the word land does, it's the Hebrew word aretz, and it has been translated as earth. But if you, you take the quote from the Messiah, how he used that prophecy there, and then you continue on. See, it, it flows, the context fits within their location and their time period. You know, so then he says in verse 9, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say it is my people, and they shall say Yahweh is my Elohim. All right. Now let's let's see some more uh, warnings and and uh, how the Messiah tells them what's going to happen after after he he leaves. Let's go hey, over to the Daniel. Book of Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. We're sorry to interrupt you, brother. Daniel. Uh, your reader is here, brother. Your reader is here. Actually, it's uh, brother Lavar from ABT. Uh, let me let him in okay. right now. Hold on for a second. Uh, Hallelujah. Hey, brother Lavar, how you doing, brother? Hey, Brother Sal, how you doing? How you doing, Daniel Ben Yaakov? I'm blessed, brother. How you been? Great, great. Glad to be here. I'm glad to have you. It's an honor having you read for me. No uh, doubt. Can you can okay. you get me uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24? No problem. Matthew 24 and... Let's let's go ahead and start at at the first verse. Now now the key to understanding this, as uh, other brothers have brought out in the past, is that that uh, Matthew twenty four these things taking place, um, you know, most of that has came to pass. So uh, you know people need to understand that. I can't teach a lesson on Matthew twenty four right now, but I'll point out a few things. Uh, Let's go go ahead and, and uh start at verse two. All right. Matthew chapter twenty four and verse two and it reads, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay, so you can see that he's speaking about the destruction of the temple. They even asked him in verse three 
Go ahead and read that. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, they ask specific questions. When shall these things be? What things? And that's the the, the stones um, being thrown down. Okay, and, and he's talking about that they're outside the temple. So they ask him, when will that be? What is the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. And many have mistaken this for... Uh, you know, Armageddon or the, the the total end. This means end of an of an age. So we're right. uh, aeons, I believe. Right. Okay. Excuse me. No, oh, I was in total agreement. Uh-huh. I was saying right. Okay. So uh, we can see what specifically what what they're asking him. All right. Now, and uh, jump on down to verse six. Verse six, and it reads, "And ye shall hear of wars." And rumors of wars See that ye be not troubled For all these things must come to pass But the end is not yet Go ahead For nations shall rise against nation And kingdom against kingdom And there shall be famines And pestilences And earthquakes In diverse places Now all these things did did take place One could ease We're not going to get into this right now But you can look in the uh, writings of Josephus, and uh, you can read the history on this. And, uh, the, you know, the, soon after, years later, after the uh, the Mashiach ascended, they, uh, there were rumors of wars. There was a rebellion against Rome, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But uh, let's jump on down to... Um, There's a couple things I want to point out here. Go down to uh, verse 9. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. All right. So he tells he's telling the disciples these things. He said they're going to deliver you up to be afflicted. They're going to kill you. So he's telling them you will be killed. All right, and and uh, you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Read on. Verse 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Okay, let's look up this word offended because some of you have been, you know, misunderstood that for being, you know, like, oh, your feelings were hurt or something like that, you know. But this word... It's deeper than that, all right? It's the word scandalized, though, all right? And we can tell that's where we get the word scandal, or scandalized from. But it means to entrap, that is to trip up. Figure it's thick, this from Strong's, it's word uh, G4624. But it means to, to trip up, figuratively to stumble or entice to sin, uh, apostasy or displeasure. But we can see to entrap. Now, when you entrap someone, let me just get the the, uh, Webster's definition for that. All right, the definition, English definition of entrap is to catch as in a trap, to ensnare, used chiefly or wholly in a figurative sense, Uh, to catch by artifices, to involve in difficulties or distresses, to entangle, to catch or involve in contradictions, in short, to involve in any difficulties from which an escape is not easy or possible. All right, so this offended, this isn't like people are hurting other people's feelings. That's not really relevant. You know, he's talking about a life and death situation here. But this this is to entrap, you know, people coming against them. All right, and then it says, and... Uh, go ahead and read read that over, my brother. Verse 11? Uh, verse 10. Okay, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, sh- And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 
Read on. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah. So, and and there were many false prophets. You can read about it in the in the rest of the uh, messianic text. There were false prophets rising up. Josephus spoke about those things. I'm just pointing out the instructions that he was giving them. He was telling them about a time that was related to them and not a time related to uh, uh, for our age. Um, go ahead and read verse 14. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All right, and so all the world at that time, if you were to look at that, that world, so people, they, they also apply this to uh, these days, these later days that we're in right now. But if you look at that word, you know, uh, acumene, all right, Strong's number 3625, it, it reads land. That is the terrain or globe, but specifically the Roman Empire. And you can see in um, during that time, especially Shaul, you know, he he traveled a lot and, and he got that message out. You know, as as did other uh um apostles. Now, um what I wanna because I'm leading up to the, I'm gonna show how this coincides exactly with the, the book the prophecy found in Zechariah thirteen verses eight and nine. Um uh, read on, verse fifteen. Verse 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, now here you can see he's not talking about a pope or anything like that. It, it's the same abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel. All right, same type of armies coming up and in, in, uh, standing where they shouldn't be. All right, and this is speaking of the Roman army, just like they were speak, uh, speaking of the Grecians in in, uh, in the book of Daniel. But anyways, uh, read verse 16. Verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay, let him now, oh, no, that, that, that's fine. Now he tells them to flee into the mountains. Now, I've heard some interpret interpret this as, uh, you know, Israelites going into Africa. Mm. But even though we, we do know that, that uh, over a million Israelites did flee into, into Africa around this time during these years. But the word mountains, okay, now history shows us um, from uh, the writings of, of uh, Eusebius, he was a historian, bishop, and a church father, uh, lived approximately around the third century. But Eusebius states that that uh, many people who it, it, I'll, I'll read it. Um, I'll quote, read the quote. It says, uh, "At this juncture, after Cestius Gallus had raised the siege and Vespasian was approaching with his army, all who believed in Christ left Jerusalem and fled to Pella." and other places beyond the River Jordan. And so they all marvelously escaped the general shipwreck of their country, not one of them perished. Uh, also at the same time, uh, other other scholars have said they went to Mount Libanus. Mount Libanus is actually uh, the mountain range of, of Lebanon. And Pella is located uh, in the Jordan Valley. You know, so there's mountains. It, it tells him go. He says go into the mountains. And this isn't speaking of drilling a hole or a cave or anything, but the mountains are, are, are a mountain range. And in in Jordan, you can find the, this mountainous range. And uh, the city of Pella was located there. So many many of the, of the believers in the Shia, it says not one of them perished. So those those believers were were spared and and uh, they found safety um, by fleeing by by following these instructions that were handed down. Okay, um, 
Read on, brother. Verse 17. Verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Go ahead. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. <clears throat> okay, so he, during during that time, he's telling them these things. Don't return back. You know, you you have to make a quick move. And uh, I don't have the quote with me. Hopefully, I can find it before before I'm finished. But it says that that. Uh, when the general, when they they were they had a short opportunity, where the Roman army had fallen back, you know, for a brief time, period of time, and they they used that opportunity to, to escape into the mountains. But you can see that everyone else was involved in the siege. Uh, jump on down to uh, go ahead and read verse twenty. Read, you're going to read verse twenty through uh, twenty-two. Okay, verse twenty. But I pray. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, okay. nor ever shall be. All right. And, and this took place. I mean, the, the history shows uh, women, you know, eating their babies and whatnot. And uh, many people turning on each other, you know, the sea, people were dying from famine and starvation due to the Roman siege. And, uh, you know, this is, this is what the, uh, the Messiah was warning them about, the, the things that are getting ready to take place, because the, the, the shepherd's been smitten, all right? You know, the Messiah, everyone knows the Messiah is the shepherd, and the, the shepherd was smitten, and then the... the uh, the sheep were scattered. All right, let's let's go on back to uh, let's go on over to Luke. Give me Luke chapter nineteen. Luke nineteen. Yeah, you gotta read verses oh. forty three and forty four. Okay, Luke nineteen. You said thirty three and thirty four. Forty three and forty four. Okay, 43, 44. All right. And it reads, For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and pass thee round and keep thee in on every side. Go ahead. Verse 44. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall be one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Right, and he was talking to the Yahudim or the, the Jews that that um, he said you won't know the time of, of thy visitation. All right, but he warned him. He even warned him that look, the enemy's going to lay siege to Jerusalem. You know, and he got this from the prophecies. He didn't just dream this stuff up. So this is something that, that was expected and, and, and spoken of. Let's go. Uh, I want to read a little. Let's, let's jump back over to Zechariah. Zechariah right. chapter 13. Zechariah 13. Yeah. All right. Okay. Notice this, what he says. Um, read verse 8 again. Okay, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts then shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. I think I think a lot of people, especially those who, who uh, believe in this future two-third of Israel dying doctrine, I think they overlook the words that uh, be cut off. All right, where it it's the Hebrew word karat, 
and it means uh, to cut by implication to destroy or consume, specifically to covenant. Now, it, let's see how this script, how this phrase or this word is used in other scriptures when when it's speaking of be cut off. All right. Because you're going to see that it, it, there's no way that this could be speaking of two-thirds of Israelites, of, of Israel all over the planet. All right, let's go, let's go back to, uh, this is the same word. Let's, let's go to Numbers chapter 15. Mm-hmm. And see, this is a, a prime example of, of I mean, because this is something that's been handed down, especially out of... Uh, uh, area of uh, New York, you know, they repeat that constantly. But you know, it, it's it's obvious that many of those who who uh, teach this doctrine, they just simply repeat things. All right, so uh, Numbers chapter fifteen, uh, read verse thirty. Verse, you said verse thirty. Thirty, yeah, fifteen and verse okay. thirty. But the soul that doeth all presumptuously. Whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Mm-hmm. You see how, how his soul is cut off from among his people. All right, he's he's on the outside now. All right, let, but let's let's get another example of how the word is used. Um, Look at uh, get Deuteronomy chapter uh, nineteen, mm-hmm. and I want you to read verse one. Deuteronomy nineteen and verse one, and it reads, "Well, the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou sittest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses." Okay, now now just by reading the context of that, how that same word that's translated cut off is used shows that somebody getting out of the land, all right, the being, they, they cut off the nations whose land Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Okay, so he, he you can see how they're being cut off from the land in that context, the way that word is uh, being used. But I want to get two more examples just so, you know, we can be concrete about this. Um, give me uh, the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 11. Mm-hmm. And I want you to read verse 21. Joshua 11 and 21. And it reads, And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, Hebron, from the deer, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua destroyed right. them utterly with their cities. Yeah, see, now you can see how the, the Anakims were cut off from the mountains. So you can see they were removed from from these mountains, from this land area. All right, so we you can see they're cut off, again, deals with being removed from the land. Now, one more example. Let's get the book of Joshua, chapter 23, and uh, read mm-hmm. verse 4. Joshua 23 and verse 4, and it reads, Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. Okay. So the nations have been cut off even until the great sea westward. This is about, you know, and, then, and this is the book of Joshua, the conquest of the land of Canaan. Okay? So you, you can see now what, what cut off means. And it's been used like that in several verses. All right? And the other cut off is, is someone being separated from amongst his people. Mm-hmm. Okay, with that, with that in mind, now let's go back, back to Zechariah 13. Because I want to make sure everyone understands this. It's really simple. When you read it, you just read the chapter in its context. You know, it also helps to read a, a few chapters before this. And the book of Zechariah, uh, it's not a, that's not an easy book. All right? But but there's a, there's enough in here where you can see that it's clearly speaking of 
a land region and not the whole earth. All right, so in Zechariah 13, verse 8, when he says, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, all right, but the third part shall be left therein. Now, the, the third part being, being cut, cut, cut off or removed from the land and dying. So there will be people leaving and people dying. Right, but then there's there's the third part left therein. Now read verse nine. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Okay, so those that are left alive. They're going to be bought through the fire. All right, they'll they'll be tried. I mean, they'll they'll be tested by the Most High. You know, they'll be uh, when you serve the Most High. There, there's uh, you have to prepare your spirit to be tested. All right, I want to get an uh, example. Go over to to uh, get First Peter. Mm-hmm. First Peter chapter one, uh, read verse six and seven. <clears throat> First Peter one. <clears throat> yeah, read verses six and seven. No okay. cut. First Peter 1, 6 and 7, and it reads, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Go ahead. That the, trial, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Right. So now, now you can clearly see there he's speaking of the, this uh, this trial by fire. All right, and and uh, Peter is writing to the believers who remember it, it, the prophecy dealt with the shepherd being smitten, and and then the uh, the the flock scattered. All right, but then there there's a, a certain part that that has to be tried through fire. All right, and he says he just in Zechariah in verse nine it tells him he's going to try them as gold is tried. All right, just like uh, Peter mentions, you know, your that in verse seven that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory. At the appearing of the Messiah. Now, this is what the people had to continuously go through. All right, they 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 went through a, a, a big trial at that time. But well, back to back to the uh, the uh, the people being cut off and those dying. Now, there, there's several historical records on the death toll that that took place during uh, the Roman Revolt. All right, there's. Uh, I'll read a couple. See, it's it's not me for it's it's not my job to actually calculate two thirds. You know, you know how many people was uh, died and how many people were uh, kicked out of the land. But we do know that that uh, according to uh, the offer of, from Babylon to Timbuktu. I'm drawing a blank right now. But in, in uh, the book entitled From Babylon to Timbuktu, he lists, he mentions that one million Israelites fled down into Africa during this time period in the, uh, of the Roman invasion. All right. Now, we know there were Israelites in other places. You had Israelites who were already living in, in uh, Ethiopia, Alexandria, Egypt, 
um, certain parts of northern Africa and whatnot. That's that's all listed in in uh, you know history and, and scripture. You can find these things, but there were also those who had to flee the land. Let me get a quote for you. Now Josephus mentions in. Uh, I'll get the quote for you in a minute, the exact information, so you can look it up on your own. But he, he mentions that that uh, approximately 1.2 million Jews were killed uh, during the invasion. All right. And uh, the Roman uh, historian Tacitus, he uh, mentions that only 6,000 were killed. You know, but there's other sources on that as well. The consensus amongst amongst historians and scholars is, is right around one million, one point one million, somewhere around there. But uh, you know, then you had you had those who were left in, in the land, or those who fled and went and went into the mountains. There's many people who did that, not just the uh, the uh, they call them Christians, the, the followers of the Messiah. Not just those those people, but there are others who who fled. So, you can historically, you know, from a historical standpoint, you know, like I said, we don't have the exact numbers, but you can see right now that we we have a location. We're speaking of uh, people being cut off from the land, and we also have a a warning of uh, the prophecy found in the same chapter that the Messiah mentioned. And then people being uh, offended and scattered, you know. But this is what this is: is when people give prophecies like this, or they break down uh, scripture in this manner. A lot of times they're pushing fear. All right, they're, they're pushing fear amongst the followers because, you know, if the apostles were told they were going to be killed. And uh, there was a lot of persecution during those days. Why would why would someone use fear or or the thought of death, you know, during these latter days, you know, to uh, influence someone, to scare them with a physical death? You know, the the scriptures actually speak against that. Uh, go on, go on, get me. Uh, Got my scriptures all over the place here. Oh, let's let's. While I'm looking for that, let's go on back to uh, the book of Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel chapter five. Mhm. I want you to read verse one. All right, Ezekiel chapter five and verse one. And it reads, And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee bounces to weigh and divide the hair. Read on. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And a third part shalt shall, thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Okay, now stop there for a minute. There are um, many scholars, I'll tell you right now, just from my own research, there's uh, certain scholars and commentators that have uh, Different on on this prophecy, some some say this is for Babylon, uh, the Babylonian captivity. Some say this was the uh, the Maccabean revolt and uh, with the invasion of the Antiochus Epiphanes, and uh, some say this is for for uh, the Roman siege. Now I'll leave it up to you up to you to determine what uh, how this prophecy fits. All right, so let's read on. Okay. Verse number three. 
Verse number three. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Verse number five. Thus said the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Okay, go ahead. And she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Read on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. You know, what's interesting about this is uh, the Most High said, Israel has changed its judgments uh, into weakness more than the nations. And you don't hear a lot of certain people, you know, speak on that. <laughs> You know, and then he says, you, you haven't even, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. You know, we're going to read on. All right. Okay, verse number eight. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, am against thee, <clears throat> and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. <clears throat> And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like because of all thine abominations. Okay, now let's let's just for the sake of time, let's let's jump on down to verse twelve. Verse twelve A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And the third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds. And I will draw out a sword after them. Now, we can see here, um, I, I don't see how people can get the map of being revolt out of that. But, you know, right now, okay, we're dealing with three-thirds again, three parts. All right, and it's similar to the same things that, that uh, were written about in, in the book of Zechariah and the things that the Messiah warned the people about. All right. You know, the, his, like I said, history and, and the scripture, it speaks about the, the uh, pestilence and famine and people being consumed um, with that. And then a third part falling by sword. And then a, and, and then a third part being scattered to all, into all winds. Now I can't see this as a, as a, a Babylonian captivity prophecy because it didn't quite occur that way. All right. So so anyways, uh, go ahead and, and uh, read verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. Thus shall my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I am. Down the Lord have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Okay, jump down to uh, verse 15. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. When I to execute justice in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken. Okay, so we see this is another day of visitation. All right, read on. Verse 16, when I shall send upon the, the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff on staff of bread. Excuse me. All right, go ahead and read the last verse. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, 
and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken. All right, we can see once again in that chapter, he's talking about Jerusalem once again, and these same things taking place. Um, now, the scripture says, this, you know, the, the, thing, the thing about that, that incorrect interpretation of Zechariah uh, 13, 8 and 9 being, being used so much, is like I said, many, many people, when they, they join certain camps or schools and whatnot, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times mind control is being used on, on these people. You know, and they're, they're teaching them to fear death. And, of course, it's a natural natural order of things that man is uh, naturally inclined to preserve his own life. But to, you know, to tell someone, okay, you, if you, you're not getting right, you're going to be part of the two-thirds who don't make it. And then use that scripture. You know, that's just taking, that's being reckless with the scriptures, actually. And then it makes you, it makes one wonder you know the the man who who really taught that, who was really pushing that. You know the elders who pushed that. It makes you think. Well, well, where are they at in their understanding? And those who continue to uh, just follow it. You know, let's 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 read what it. You know, what death is is about. All right, let's go into the apocrypha. You got your apocrypha with you, Brother Lamar? Yes, sir, I do. Let me look over here real quick. I know I got it over here. In my bag. Let's sit on some Ciroc. <laughs> here we go. I got okay. it. Scripture said, uh, Ciroc, uh, chapter 8, let's read verse 7. I'm going to read a few of these things regarding regarding death. You said uh, Ecclesiasticus? Yeah. Oh, uh, which chapter? Chapter 8. Okay. And you're going to read you know, verse these, 7. These Roman numerals, boy, be killing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, 8. Verse 7. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm right. 5, 6, 7. 8 and verse Seven. All right, here we go. Y'all got to bear with me, okay? In verse 7, it says, Rejoice not over thy greatest enemy being dead, but remember that we die all. Right. We all die. Okay? Let's, let's move, keep it moving. Let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 14, read verse 17. Mm-hmm. Okay. 14 and verse 17. All right. It says, Here all flesh waxes old as a garment. For the covenant from the beginning is, Thou shalt die the death. That's right. You know, just like like a. a now we're talking about phys, a physical death here. All right, just like like the uh, you know the, the plants, you know the flowers, they plants, they live and die. That's that's the order of things. I'm talking physical death. All right, so so for someone to scare anyone with this, it, it, you know, it, it's like saying, you know, that there's several righteous men between now and and the end time who have perished. You know, and they're not part of two thirds. You know, to say two thirds of, of someone wicked is, is gonna, uh, two thirds of the wicked people is gonna die. When we're all, if we're all gonna die, unless unless the uh, Mashiach returns in our lifetime, but none of us know that exact day. So as it's scheduled, as we get older, you know, with many of us we will grow old and die, or some might die an un- untimely death. But look what it says. Let's let's go to let's turn over to the uh, book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter four. And you're gonna read verse seven. And you got it. Read. 
Okay, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse number 7. Mm. It says, we wearied ourselves. Uh, no, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, but, but though the righteous. Probably in the wrong chapter. What is Roman hey, if you want, now. if you want, I'll read that, and and you go ahead and, and get uh Sirach forty one verse three on deck. All right, forty one verse three. Right. Yeah, right. I'm gonna read wisdom. Right. I'm gonna read wisdom uh, chapter four verse seven. It reads, All right. but though the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall he be in rest. All right. So how how, how can someone make big threats about the future over physical death? When we we're in rest, you know, as as though your whole mission was not to be part of this so-called two-thirds club, you know, that at at the end isn't gonna that's gonna be killed, you know, and even and if and if there's someone listening who and if this this is your doctrine, and you use that that one scripture right there to prove your doctrine, it, it's Obvious that it's faulty. It simply doesn't add up. All right, go ahead and read uh, Sirach 41, verse 3. And it reads, Fear not the sins of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sins of the Lord over all flesh. That's right. You know, we we are born to die. You know, many righteous men before us have, have, have died. They lived and died. You know, that that but let the the Messiah really really brings it home when he says this. Uh turn over to the book of Matthew chapter ten and read verse twenty eight. I had a feeling you was going there. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> spirit. <laughs> Matthew ten and twenty eight and it reads, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. So so that you know, when you hear somebody out there prophesying, it's and these are the same people who 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 already came out with false prophecies like the year two thousand stuff and all that? When when you hear things like that, oh, you're gonna be part of two thirds. Y'all gonna y'all gonna be destroyed. You're going to concentration camp. This and that. We're told not to fear. Don't fear the, them which kill the body. Fear him that's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that word translated hell is Gehenna. So it ain't just talking about the, the grave. There's that that's that eternal damnation. All right? You know, you in that lake of fire. But see you got some people teaching that the lake of fire is a, nu- a nuclear explosion. You know, I don't know how death gets put in there that <laughs> but this this is the type of uh understanding that we're dealing with out there. And many many of these people who who uh, hold this doctrine, they're real bold and you know, in this sort of in this teaching, regardless of if it's if it's incorrect or not, they're just bold about it because it's one of the scriptures that they've memorized. You know, they've been taught to you know go to this one when we talk about two thirds. All right, I'm not gonna hold up much more of your time. I just wanna. I think I'll, I'll, I'll end with this scripture here. Um, I had some more history I wanted to get into, but not. That stuff is easily easily found in you know in the authoritative research sources. Uh get me first John chapter four. I want you to read verse eighteen. All right. First John chapter four, verse eighteen. Says there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment, 
he that feareth is not made perfect in love. That's right. See the the apostles, they didn't uh, they didn't deal in that that realm of, of fear. They were fearless. The scripture says the righteous are as bold as a lion. You know they had perfect love, and that cast out all fear. No no one could. They were already told they were going to die. You know, for some, but for somebody to come along and and uh, and threaten those. And usually the way it works is if you don't do what we tell you, you you part of two thirds. If you don't agree with us, you know, or if you you in our school, you don't agree. Well, you part of two thirds, putting fear on you, and two thirds is going to die real soon. We don't know when, but we keep giving out false prophecies. But they, you know, they're going to die soon. But the scripture says, "Perfect love uh, casteth out fear." All right, and yet he that that feareth is not made perfect in love. All right, so brothers and sisters, this is something that that uh, you know we can't allow to be pushed out there, and um, which is fear, for, uh, false interpretation of, of scripture, you know, uh, with prophecy that it came to pass. You know, we 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 can't uh, we can't stand for that. And uh, this this two third third thing, it, it I've been wanting to address it for a while, and. Uh, so at this time, you know, may the Most High bless your understanding, and uh, I'd like to open it up for any comments or questions. All right, once again, you're now listening to Debate Talk for you, the title of this lesson. Will two-thirds of Israel perish in the future? The number is 646-716-7320. That's 646 646- Seven one six seven three two zero. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to press the number one, and of course I'll add you into the conversation. And a very powerful message so far. And really, you know, there's a lot of people tuning in right now via phone. All right, let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say. Let's go to the first person. Three one five four one four. You're live on debate talk for you. You have any questions or comments? Uh, yes, yeah, shalom everybody. Uh, shalom to Prophet Six One Nine. That's how I know you on YouTube. I just want to say it's a great class, um, an eye opener, and I just want to get your uh, feedback on is Revelations uh, seven and nine. Do you think uh, uh, that's that go against that doctrine of two thirds should be cut off uh, in Revelation seven and nine? And a great class. And thanks a lot. Shalom. All right, let's get that right quick. Revelation 7 and 9. <clears throat> Is uh, Brother LeVar still on? You want to read that? Yeah, it says here, uh, Revelation 7 and 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne nor for the lamb clothed with white robe and palms in their hands. All right, brother. So your your question was, I'm, I'm trying to remember what you wanted to know if, if, if this is related to uh, Zechariah 13 and 9, 13 and 8. Yeah, it doesn't go against Zechariah. Um, uh, I think three and nine when people try to use that verse, uh, it doesn't add up when you read Revelation seven and nine. So I just want to see. Oh, correct. Yeah, that is on that. Yeah, I'm, um, I agree. It doesn't back up. I, I, I did a lesson on on this topic in the past, and uh, you know, this is where it says, um, "After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues." So this is an innumerable amount of people. So a person could not put a two-thirds of anything or one-third of anything in there. This is an, an innumerable amount of people. There's there's no number put on there. So there's no numerical value put on that amount. All right. Thanks for your feedback. I appreciate your call, my brother. And uh, once again, the number is 646-716-7320. There's a lot of people tuning in right now. Once again, I really appreciate you guys for listening to uh, Debate Talk for you. Uh, let's go to the next person here, uh, 478213. You're live on Debate Talk for you. you have any questions or comments? 
Yeah, this uh, this is Brother Antoine for ABT. I just uh, wanted to comment a little bit. Um, Shalom, Brother LeVar, and uh, Brother Daniel. How y'all doing tonight? Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, you know, my uh, my purpose for calling in, you know, I just wanted to encourage Brother Daniel, you know what I'm saying, to continue, um, you know what I'm saying, doing what he's doing. and uh, Because uh, the, the doctrines, many of the doctrines, and now a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, one thing when people always come to ABT and they ask us, uh, like, man, you know, who, you know, are there any other people out there we should go, you know, we should check out online? And we always encourage people to check out everything online because you really need to hear the other side of the story, what everybody else is out there talking about. But, um, you know, the first thing is, like, re endorse somebody, hey, you need to go listen to them cats out there in Cali, man. You got to go listen to Dan. You need to go check out Profit on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I just wanted to encourage him, brother, because, you know, and, and he's absolutely right about, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there butcher, butchering prophecies <laughs> and using these prophecies to to as a, as a fear tactic to use against the people. Now, whatever they're, you know, maybe, maybe they're trying to gain power, they're trying to gain membership, they're trying to get money, they're trying to do something. They, you got people out there telling you, hey, you need to, you, hey, they they get FEMA camp started up. They they about to get and they go use prophecies and, and proverbs and songs and they go and twist stuff completely out of context. You know what I'm saying to get people scared. You know what I'm saying. And um and and I just wanted to encourage your brother. You know I, I you know I, I tuned into the lesson. I actually I just got home. I was I was somewhere else and I was gonna actually try to read, but I I, I didn't have a um a Bible with me when I first started listening, so I couldn't do it. But um, I just wanted to encourage your brother because um, a lot of people don't know, like, some of the things that, you know, that Prophet uh, shows, is, especially in the Hebrew Israelite community, is not popular at all, you know, to them, you know what I'm saying? They will, I mean, they will call you every kind of name, everything, cuss you out, talk about your mama, daddy, sister, brother, and, and all this stuff just because you out there trying to show the people the truth, and uh, you know I'm glad that uh, he's 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 on debate talk for you and doing his class uh, tonight. And uh, you know I just wanted to encourage your brother. Y'all keep doing what y'all are doing, and uh, stay up. Uh, brother, yeah, brother, brother Antoine. Right. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to respond right quick. You got it. Yeah, brother Antoine. Um, yeah, thank you for for your for your comment, and. Uh, we, we, you know, everything's likewise with us out here as well. You know, I, we always refer uh, ABT's lessons. You know, there's there's, there's not a whole lot of uh, people really trying to uh, bring the truth. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of you know repetition and, and parroting going on out there, and uh, some people aren't really searching for the truth. They just they're searching for things to coincide with their philosophies, and just like for this example, it, it, for example, they'll they'll be flack out of the pride of people's hearts. So they you know they'll they'll backlash you know there'll be some backlash and they'll lash out and make you know bad comments and 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 uh, you know uh, hateful remarks and whatnot. When it it's it's like it's a gang mentality or a wolf pack mentality. Some of these people aren't really searching for the truth, and they're just still stuck on a lot of these old uh, teachings that have been handed down to them. But, uh, yeah, Brother Antoine, um, I'm, I'm going to encourage you, you brothers out there to, you know, keep it going and, and you know, keep doing what the Most High called you to do because uh, that, that's what it's all about, you know, us uh, constantly searching for the truth and, and uh, taking correction and giving correction, you know, and, and just uh, continuing to grow. Yeah, and um, am I still on? Yeah, yeah. still on, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, and and just just a testament. I don't know for some odd reason, um, people get the impression that you know that we are. Um, I'm just speaking on behalf of us that we're we're unapproachable, that people can't talk to us, that we ain't willing to listen and learn stuff. There's been several times. I remember when I first got into the truth, I was actually at the, uh, um, this organization it's based out of it, uh, Chicago. And, uh, you know, I, um, when I got to truth, I was with the Israel of God. And um, so mm-hmm. once I started to question some things there, right, you know, I started searching on YouTube. One of the first, you know, things uh, other than Josh that I saw 
was uh, I saw some products. So, you know, there was a lot of things that you guys and your camp had out that I was eating alive. You know, I was like, oh, my goodness. This is like when I, when, you know, when you had the whole Esau series going, I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. You know, I learned a lot. When you were breaking down the coins, who was on coin? I was like, wow. Oh, you, yeah. know, this is, you know what I'm saying? This is this is a big time heavy hitting stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'm sure there's been some time we may have done something that you say like, oh wow, you know, I've never I've never seen this before. I never looked at, I never read this here or something before. And and you know, and, and one thing I always tell people, I was like, you know, it's it's always uh, you can tell when people are being really um, humble and stuff, but I I never got a ever got a sense of false humility from y'all and you know and I it was a true testament when y'all came on YouTube uh when I believe it was you when you came on YouTube and you were like uh when uh Josh uploaded the uh Death and the Afterlife video and you were like you know uh you know thanks for uploading this I never read this before I never looked at it in this way yeah. and I was like you know for this brother to I mean uh, and regardless of whether or not people agree with you online about a lot of people respect you. That's why they always got stuff to say. Um, mm-hmm. They always making videos. They, are, they regardless of what they like, they gonna they show you respect because they they I mean they know you bringing it. You know what I'm saying? And for you to come and do that, we we're like you know like wow you know it's like we we're like praise God you know for you for for um for first of all you being able to see it, but uh, you know what I'm saying being humble enough to be like you know. And, and that let us know that this do you love truth more than anything, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and and we get the sense from y'all, so you know we appreciate that for y'all. And uh, you know I'm I'm just glad you're on here uh, doing your thing, bro. But that's it. Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, you know, the scripture says a wise man, you know, you, you take the correction, and that's what it's all about. Continuing to to search for the truth, and um. You know, it's it's like it's not a whole lot of people that I check for on on uh, when it comes to uh, teachings online, like you know, but uh, ABT is is uh, that's one that's one group who I check for. Those those are our brothers, you know. And and back on, on that situation, you know, with the uh, the death and the afterlife, you know, I love those other brothers as well, you know. But the, the thing is, we all know this that you know we all don't have it all. You know, and that that's the mission that's the mission that we're on right now to get as much knowledge, wisdom and understanding that we can. You know, but at the same time there's a lot of people that don't need to be teaching. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And that's why we that's why we here for, and, and and as I say that's why I feel like that's what why we here for each other. You know, a lot of times we need to set stuff aside and just go ahead and come together. You know what I'm saying? And grow. We I mean, we so divided on little things that people don't want to let go of pride. People don't want to let go of a doctrine. People are not willing to see things, or, or they they don't want to. Uh, we used to, I used to learn this in college. You know, to, to critically think everything. You know what I'm saying? It's called critical thinking. First thing you learn in English class: critical mm-hmm. thinking. You you got to think it. You got to look at it from the broad. You got to look at it. You know, all the way around. Well, what about this? You got to be a devil's advocate with yourself. Question everything. Question what you're being taught. And try to look at it from a, if you find holes in it, then maybe you need to try to let it go. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't look at this. You know, don't don't only look at it through one lens and not be willing to look at it through the other, and then make a an unbiased decision. You know what I'm saying? You got to be willing to do both. And I feel like you know what I'm saying a lot of times we ha- we have to be willing to you know put stuff down and um uh, and come together because uh I, I feel like that's what it's that's what it's all about. How you how you feel about it, Levar? Well, like you were saying. <clears throat> For the most part, when I first came on YouTube about four or five years ago, I was checking for Brother Daniel, you know what I'm saying, and Josh. And I seen that they were speaking a little bit differently from everybody else. Everybody else seemed like Stacey was saying the same thing. They was bringing something a little bit different. And it was because that they care about the truth more than anything else. And I could definitely appreciate that, and that's why I tell anybody I know if you want to hear some of the truth, you go to Prop 613, go to Josh. You know what I'm saying? Just to be brief, you know what I mean? But, yeah, definitely we need to come together. It's hard to do that when people come in with these biased attitudes and these racist doctrines or what have you. And, and, and this doctrine, like the brother just exposed, trying to use fear to uh, subjugate the people. That's all I got on that. Yeah. 
And once again, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. The title of this lesson today, Will Two-Thirds of Israel Perish in the Future? My special guest is Daniel ben Yacob and Olivar Maven. Actually, we have another person here right now with a question or a comment. Let's go to the people. Let's see what they got to say. Uh, 562-861, you're live on Debate Talk for you. You have a question or comment? Yeah, I got a question and a comment. Hey, this is Brother Gabar from Los Angeles. Man, I love your show, Sal. Don't get it twisted. But I, I've been listening to your show for a while, Brother Josh and GOCC. I get a lot from a lot of these brothers. You know I'm saying I, I don't believe that's one group group out there that got all the truth. You know say remind me of the scripture with uh, the disciples as telling Christ, man, them brothers over there, man, you know. Speaking in Christ is they saying something against me? And they're like, no. Nah. He's like, all right, leave them alone then. So I th- sometimes I take it that people is just like just trying to gather brothers in. I don't think we're all going to be united under one umbrella except you know Christ's umbrella. So to me, it sounds sound like the churches now. These programs, YouTube videos, this brother going against this brother. It's like the Baptist against the Pentecostal. And, and you know, man, we just need to just get out of one umbrella, which is the commandments. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the umbrella everybody needs to get them. Yeah, GOCC say this, flee, which I don't think they just say, if you want to leave, you leave. Brother Josh always knocking people down because they got a, a high school education. My question to that brother is like, yeah. what? school that the disciples go to. The Holy Spirit can come upon anyone and give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So to me, man, I'm not knocking either one of these brothers on the show today either. But it sounds like, man, it's, you're cherry-picking, man. It's like, we got the truth. They don't have the truth. They say this. They're taking this out of doctrine. And they're taking this. You know, it's just like a little kid's bibbling, man. When Why are we getting this position we're in today as Israelites? Because we broke the law, statute, and commandments. So all these brothers out here, all these camps, as long as they're keeping the law and such commandments, the most high going to, you know, he's going to separate the tares from the wheat, the sheep from the goat. Ain't no camp out there can do none of that. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I just hate to see brothers just, you know, picking it like they're in church and stuff, man. I used to go to a, a Baptist church, you know what I'm saying? They, a church right next door to them. Oh, they ain't got the truth. You know, they believe in the Father, the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost. You got to be baptized in. They, and they got the same book. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I know that. I know that for a fact, okay? Brother Josh, I always say, nah, you don't know your Hebrew is your light. I follow the curses, okay? So be it. But I just hate to see brothers just biggling over who got the right doctrine. Man, if you follow these laws, statutes, and commandments, bruh, Christ's going Christ gonna to separate the ones that don't, don't got the truth. That's the way I see it, man. That's my comment, Doc. Yeah, I appreciate you more, brother. Uh, Dan, you want to reply? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Brother Gabar, I, I agree with some of your, your sentiments there. Um, we actually, you know, have the same same understanding or, or ideals when it when it comes to that. As I just mentioned in, in my previous comment, that uh, none of us have it has it all. You know, the, the, you know, there's many pieces to the body of Messiah, and uh, they all have different functions. You know, and and uh, there's only one head. So, you know, you got these groups. Everyone wants to pop up and be a shepherd, you know, as you uh, alluded to. But uh, as far as uh, when it comes to uh, technical breakdowns of, of Scripture and whatnot, you know, it, it is our job to study to show ourselves approved and, and, and uh, for the teachers to actually come, you know, with the proper understanding, you know. So it's our job to get in these scripts. I'm talking about uh, for teachers, not for anyone. Not not right now. I think there's too many teachers, and and uh, not everyone's called to teach. And so you know you have a lot of confusion going on with that, especially with with uh, the internet and whatnot. Anybody can just sit in this bedroom and and uh, put up a video and call himself a teacher. And so I think that's what uh, brother brother Antoine and and uh, brother Lavar were were getting at. You know, when, when there's just there's a lot of incorrect teachings. It's not necessarily these people and that people, but, but incorrect teachings going forth that can hurt the people. And and uh, as we've just seen as an example in this lesson, you know, because there's fear behind that that incorrect breakdown of that scripture, and you can see it became a buzzword. You know, and they're all pushing. 
you know, many people are pushing fear with that. And as the scripture said, you know, that, you know, fear, true love, you know, it is, there's no place for fear when you have true love. And uh, so uh, I'm with you on that. I, I, I uh, share a lot of your sentiments, brother. Uh, brother LeVar, you want to comment? Yeah, just briefly, the brother said, he mentioned the phraseology cherry picking. Only thing that me and Brother Antoine pretty much verbalized was that we had respect for Prophet 613. And if you go and wind this in the archive, Brother Antoine alluded to that we tell people to listen to everybody. In other words, that, that's not cherry picking because you need to figure out the truth for yourself. Compare and contrast. I got love for all the Israelite community, but all the Israelite community don't have love for me because you got these uh-huh. jakes running around teaching racism and hate. That's my main problem, brother. I ain't got no problem with any organization personally. Hey, I have a on? problem with, yeah, I have still a problem on. with, it's still on. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with people who teach hate. Because a person could be incorrect about certain topics, but my thing is people giving the faith a black eye. You got a lot of people who want to get into the faith, but then you got these cats teaching hate, and that turns people away from keeping the commandments. They like, I'd rather stay in a Sunday church because at least they ain't teaching hate. That's the biggest thing. But we don't cherry pick. We tell everybody that we come in contact with. Listen to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a cult teaching if you're telling people, oh, we got the truth and nobody else. You will never hear us say anything like that, and we never said anything like that. So that's okay. all I got for that. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, I understand exactly what you're saying. I mean, I wasn't trying to attack you, your group, or nothing like that. I'm just saying in general, all Israelites. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like I say, I, I, I've been in the truth since the 80s. I used to study with mm-hmm. the Shield of Wisdom out here in Los Angeles, okay? Now, what attracted me to them, these brothers, I'm like, man, these brothers, these guys on Venice Beach, these brothers, you know, spitting the word, they had their hatred in it. But guess what? As this, as I grew, I knew to eat the meat and spit out the bone. I left that, I left that, whole, I left that whole organization, but I stuck with the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just saying I just hate to see brothers going against each other, man, because it, it, to me it's irrelevant. Follow, your law, I, stat, follow the law, statute, and commandments, man. That's it. You you're know right. I, yes. I, I, totally, I totally agree. I just didn't like when you used the phraseology, cherry Okay, picking. no, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going directly. I would say all camps, all camps. Okay. Like, like I say, okay. I listen, I listen okay. to, uh, give you a prime example, I listen to Brother Josh, when Brother Josh break it down about the virgin birth. I listen to mm-hmm. GOCC when he talk about the prophecies. You know, then I go back and forth, and I'm not confused because I can, you know, I can discern the truth. If certain things mm-hmm. Josh say, I'll be like, nah, that's off. You know what I'm saying? Certain things GOCC say, that's off. But the mm-hmm. thing is, I, I goes back with Christ, with a rich man told Christ, you know, how can I get everlasting life? That's what we're all trying to get to the kingdom. Right. He say, follow the commandments. He then in, in Ecclesiastes, he say, the conclusion of the matter is, fear God and keep his commandments. You know, so, I mean, to me, man, I think all of us, man, need to push, all camps, push the commandments, push the commandments, because that's what's got, got us in this position that we're in today. It's breaking the law, statute, and commandments, not saying we know this breakdown, we know that breakdown, we know, because the disciples even know Christ was going to be risen again. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, my, my, my whole point, if you if you if you get nothing from the, what I just said, is, Teach the commandments. Because, like I say, you're going to eat the meat and spit out the bone. We know this hatred stuff, the white man is the devil. White man and other nations are doing their job. Come, let us come together so Israel can be no nation at all. So they, all the other nations are doing their job. We got to do our job. Everybody I run across, I teach the commandments. Man, I heard you guys on YouTube. us now, nah, brother. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, ain't with that white, black, whatever stuff. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, you follow these commandments, the most I'm going to separate the sheep from the goat, the tares from the wheat. You know what I'm saying? That's my whole point. I just hate to see the brothers, man. Cause I, I, I'm scared to tell people, go check out Josh. Go check out GOCC. Go check out this brother. Go check this brother. Because on the, on, on the, on the side of the uh, YouTube thing, there's going to be some GMC or whoever them do they call themselves. They're going to be over there calling women's bitches and hoes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, it's 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 just stupidity, man. But hey, brother Sal, thank you for your show, man. 
Whatever I can do to support your show, I will, man. But please, man, push the commandments, brothers. Appreciate that, With that, brother. I'm going to say shalom. That. Shalom, brother. Appreciate that, man. And once again, you're now tuned in to Debate Talk for you. Uh, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. We actually wound it down to the last few minutes of the show. Um, we'll let our brother Daniel uh, share some last words to listen to the audience before we sign off. All right. Uh, yeah, I just want, I want to thank everybody for for tuning in, and and our brother Sal for for having me on. And I uh, do plan on coming back doing more, and uh, if he'll have me. But uh, I also want to say uh, to to everyone listening, you know, like I mentioned before, if you're searching for truth, regardless of what your elder might have taught you. Uh, or what you might have heard over and over out in the streets. If you really search them for truth, you uh, you know you you investigate these things further. You know, then you you have to go back to whoever taught you this and ask them uh, uh, several questions. And uh, also, you know, using some of the information that that I brought out and that maybe you've uh, studied on your own. You know, it's everyone's responsible. And, you know, it ain't that we shouldn't have the mentality like, well, he he ain't from my camp. Or, you know, that's them them brothers out there. They teach different. They believe different. And uh, so we ain't with them. So we're gonna stick to what we've been taught. And no, that's not the mentality you should have because, you know, when it's judgment day, nobody your your elder, your your camp leader, or whatever, nobody's gonna be out there holding your hand, and you won't be able to put the blame on him. So uh, and and uh, as the uh, the other bro- brother had mentioned, yeah, it's, that's first and foremost. Keep the commandments. That's what we're put here to do. You know, that's plain and simple. And uh, with that, I want want to thank everybody once again and uh, thank my reader. And uh, and I, I'd like to say shalom, blessings. Uh, shalom, brother. And once again, for those of you that want to reply or say make a comment, send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail dot com. That's debatetalkforyou at gmail dot com. Let me know what you thought about the show. Of course, uh, Dan, you're always welcome to come back to the show, as well as others. If you want to be a part of the debate talk for you, send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail dot com. Let me know if you want to teach a lesson, or if you want to be a part of the debate forum. You know, the show is open. It's not you know non biased. Everybody knows. So once again, if you want to be a part of the debate talk for you, send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail.com. Once again, I appreciate there's a lot of people tuning in right now listening to the show. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in via phone. Uh, Tune in tomorrow with another show. I'm going to see you guys next time. Take care and God bless.